For more on Brazil's preparations for the Olympics, I'm joined by Professor Dennis Coates from the Department of Economics at the University of Maryland. And Dennis, thanks so much for joining us. What are Brazil's main challenges preparing for the Olympics, would you say? I think that the main challenges are meeting the promises that they made in terms of the infrastructure investments that they're already struggling to, um, to fulfill. After the game, San Paulo and uh, Rio de Janeiro remain popular destinations, but what is likely to happen to the investments made in the other nine cities, do you think? Well, it depends on exactly what those investments are. Most of the cities that, that are getting investments are getting um, highways, um, high-speed rail, some connections to airports and those sorts of things, which, you know, those are always going to be beneficial and helpful to the, the citizens and also helpful to the, the community in terms of economic development. The, the issue about um, infrastructure that has to do specifically with the games, now that's, that's a bigger question. So building velodromes and, and swimming pools and, and beach volleyball courts and things of that sort, that really have no use other than for the Olympics, that's a bigger issue. Well, maybe we can get to that in just a minute. But Dennis, one of the things that we always see with the Olympics, we saw it in London, uh, it, it, there always seems to be delays, there seems to be all these hiccups, uh, not enough security or security problems, all these sorts of things. If you were to look into your crystal ball, what do you think, if you were involved in the Brazilian government, you'd be preparing for? Uh, because there's always something out there that you don't see on the horizon that could be a complication. I think that, frankly, I'd be concerned about water supplies. That probably sounds a little bit silly, but um, I've read reports recently that they have uh, very serious problems with water treatment plants. And, you know, one thing you want to do when you have visitors from all around the world is be able to provide them with potable water. Well, that is key. Uh, once the Olympic teams have left, what do you think will be the lasting impact for Brazil or on Brazil? Uh, there won't be any. Uh, the, the highways and so on will, be, will still be there. But in terms of anything substantial, in terms of greater uh, tourism or that sort of thing, there won't be any. Well, let me ask you about that. From an investment standpoint, then, is it, is it a crapshoot uh, where some of the host cities actually benefit? But, of course, you know, when we think of Sarajevo or Montreal, two host cities for very different reasons, uh, they probably don't have fond memories of the games. Is it a crapshoot? I, I think that it is a bit of a crapshoot, though I think that the odds are stacked against you that the places that have really benefited in long term as a consequence of hosting the games are far fewer than the places that have have not so people typically point to barcelona as as a big success um, but if you think about albertville you know i'm thinking um, also about winter olympics albertville lillehammer um, calgary these are all places that that spent a lot of money to host olympic games and, you know, a year later, there's, there's basically nothing going on there. In fact, in Lillehammer and Albertville, buildings that were built specifically for those events have been torn down. So, Dennis, why is it we see this, uh, I mean, we see it every time, these, these countries, you know, trying to kill each other, these cities trying to win the Olympic Games, uh, when I guess if you were an economist, you might advise them it's not a smart move. Well, one thing is, that's important to remember is that there are benefits that don't, um, that don't get measured in dollars and cents, that don't get measured in employment. So, for example, the, the people who host feel very proud when they pull it off in a successful way. Even if there's no lasting job creation or income growth, you can still point to the fact that you were there, that your country did a wonderful job of throwing this great event for the entire world. And, and there's a lot of pride associated with that. And that's a real benefit. The, the big question is, is it worth the cost? And we don't really know if it's worth that cost or not. The, uh, but we do know the benefits from, from job creation and so on just are not there. Well, it's the power of pride. I guess that's the open question. Dennis Coates joining us from Baltimore Live this evening. Thanks so much for your insights. You're welcome.